Hey YouTube, got another video for y'all today. Uh, unfortunately, it is raining, but uh, last time I picked up this Honda E2200, and this one's the Companion Series. So it has the 30 amp hookup on it, which is great for you know, small campers and stuff like that. But uh, it does have a problem. So it runs really good, and it's almost like new. It's only been used a couple times. But uh, it has a problem with uh, idling. So it's gonna need a carburetor clean. So I'm gonna show y'all how to do that. It does run fine on with the jets on high, but uh, here let me start it up and y'all can see. That's the cold start. I haven't started it at all today. So I'll turn the gas on, turn the choke on, turn the fuel up here on. screwdriver and the carburetor is located underneath the cover right here on these Hondas. Oh, wow, this one's almost like brand new on the inside and then you have to undo these two eight millimeters right here and underneath here this is the air filter you're going to unscrew this so underneath there, there's this Phillips head where you're going to get your air filter. Go ahead and pull that out. And you're going to have another screw. You're going to have another screw right there. So take out this one, this one, and this one. have a little impact or something just makes it a little faster. I have this uh, DeWalt 12 volt works great for whenever I work on generators. And if you have a magnetic tray like this it works great to keep all your bolts in. So this should just slide right off now. And you're gonna also have an air filter or you're gonna have a, a air breather for the crankcase right there. So just leave that in there. Or I guess we can take it out real quick and make it easy. It should just pour right off there. Uh, it might help to have a flathead screwdriver if you have one. Or just some small pliers, but just be careful because it is just, this air filter housing is just plastic, so just be careful with that. And now you're left with the carburetor. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the fuel line here. You got a clip and pull the line off. And go ahead and remove the carburetor. You're gonna have some wires and some hoses for the overflow coming out of it, but that's okay. Just go ahead. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to quite. Connection runs right up in there, but I think we're gonna do it without the uh, without having to take the carburetor off. In some cases, I'll uh, I'll have to dip the carburetor in uh, that Kim Kim dip carburetor cleaner. And I don't think they're gonna have to do that in this case. So on these carburetors, let me get the camera so y'all can see a little better. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. And take so there's two jets this one's so there's the idle jet in here and the main jets down here in the bowl so we're gonna go ahead and take that bowl off it should be a 10 millimeter all right getting all repositioned here so i'm gonna take it either need a, a phillips head or a pretty small flat head and there's a phillips head right here this flat head works good because it's still small enough 
So you're gonna want, on these E2200s, you're gonna wanna run it in and count the rotations. So one, two, three, four, uh, so about four rotations. And then just keep that in mind and you can go ahead and loosen it. That's uh, because since these Hondas actually have a an idle on them, you actually have to use this. On most generators, you don't actually use the idle because it's always running at a constant RPM. But since this one will drop down, um, that's what that looks like right there. Focus. I'm gonna focus. It's just a Phillips head though. I go ahead and add that to your portable. And then you're gonna wanna pop this to get the screwdriver in there. It's gonna be kind of stuck. So you just give it a little fry up and this thing will kind of pop out and that would be your low speed jet, which is strange because it's not actually in the carburetor. But, um, so that's what that looks like. Let me see you out here. There you go, that's what that looks like. So just hold on to that. And we're gonna go ahead and take the carburetor bowl off. 10 millimeter here on my intake. Like I said, if your carburetor is really dirty, uh, you're gonna need to probably remove it and put it in the carburetor bit. But um, I'm gonna see how bad this one is. I don't think it's gonna be bad. Cause like I said, it still runs good when it's on high. It just has a little bit of a rough idle. I'm really just taking the carb bowl off just so I can show everyone. But I don't think that's where our issue lies. This one ran in our last storm, but it has been a while since our last storm, so. Yeah, like I expected, this one's very clean. Um, so in here, so if you pull this out, you're gonna wanna, this is gonna be your float and your needle valve. So you see that's your needle and that's what opens and closes whenever your um, fuel's coming in and out of the carburetor. So if you're having a carb overflow issue or it's leaking out the bottom of the carb, this is most likely your culprit you're gonna need a new jet or you're gonna need to clean this out really good, this little hole. And uh, the best way to clean that out is carb clean and then get a, a Q-tip or something small with a brush on the end that'll fit down in there. Just put it on the end of the drill and spin it until it's clean. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you. So y'all can see the main jet. And whenever you're doing this main jet, it's the one down in here, but whenever you do it, Make sure you have a good size screwdriver for it. And make sure you have plenty of pressure on it because these things strip out real easy. They're just brass, so you only get one good chance to put a bunch of pressure on it and rotate it. And it should pop right out. And this one did, luckily. But sometimes if you don't hit it just right, it'll it'll break the head off and then you're in for a, a thorn tree. So once you get that undone, just flip the carburetor over, tap it, get it to fall out, and it did. So that's your high speed jet. And you can see that light through there, so it's probably good. I'll give it one cleaning just in case. And then you're gonna wanna turn your choke off. And I don't know if you can see it down in there, but that little nub, push that with your screwdriver. You see I pushed it down. And that is your motion tube. Okay, there you go. Sometimes you have to tap the carburetor on the ground. So this is your motion tube. And the fuel goes from the main jet up into this. And these are very easy to clog because, you know, I'm sorry, the focus isn't going very good. Ah, sorry, I don't know what's going on with the focus here. But there's a bunch of holes in it, just like, on a regular jet. So uh, let me set these aside and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so here we got the parts full. So um, the best way I found to clean jets is, or the cheapest way, is just to get you a nice wire brush from like a, a grill. I, I kind of parked it with my welder, but um, this, this really works good for cleaning out the jets. And also, a can of brake parts cleaner or just carburetor cleaner works good. So let's let's start here with the main jet. 
sorry, it's just the motion tube. So um, what I like to do is before I clean off the inside, just kind of scrape it, you know, get, get all the grime off it so that doesn't get stuck up in there. And this carburetor is not bad enough, like, like I said, so I'm not going to put it inside the chem dip. But if your carburetor's been sitting for years, it probably will need the chem dip in most cases. So there we go. I got, got all the white stuff off of it. And you can see through there. I, I don't think these are going to be dirty because it was running good when it was on the high mode. But what you're going to want to do is go ahead and bend you, you know, bend you out a tab that's nice and straight like this one. And just go ahead and just run it through all of these just to make sure. Even if it looks clean, do it anyways because I ran into a lot of cases where I was like, oh, it looks clean. And I just put it back together and it ends up not running good because maybe I missed something. Or, But um, a lot of the time when people clean these carburetors, they forget about this motion tube that's up in there and they forget about that idle jet, which I'm about to show you. And then just look down in it and make sure it's all nice and clean. And then go ahead and take your can and go ahead and put it, I usually put it on this side because it kind of fits the tip of it better. I just go ahead and give it a spray and you should see it, see how it's coming out of all the uh, holes. That's what you want it to do. So I'll give that a good spray off camera whenever I don't soak the camera in the brake cleaner. But um, go ahead and put that in a clean spot. Um, and next we'll work on the main jet here. So that's a little dirty in there, but not bad. Not enough to make it run bad. So this one you're gonna wanna go ahead and this one should have a lot coming out of it because uh, this jet has a pretty big hole on it. But that's all you really gotta do for this one. It's pretty easy. And you can actually stick some, like a needle or something down in, in most of these. I don't know why the camera doesn't want to focus on anything, but there you go. You can see the hole right there. So, um, if you need, so if that one's dirty, that's all you do for that one. And next is going to be the idle jet. There is rubber seals on here, so be careful about that. But um, the way this one works is there's a little hole right here, and it sprays out these big holes. So this, this is where the, the wire brush comes in real handy because these holes are very, very small. So you're just gonna wanna push that. You have to push it a little hard to get it to break through, but you should be able to see how you can see that wire inside of there. That's what you wanna see. So um, and then just give that a good blowout with the carburetor cleaner. And it sprays out nice and good. And um, if you're having if you have a, a light or something, what I do is I shine in through the side here. I'll shine in through the side here and you should be able to see through there to see the hole. You won't be able to see it like the other jets because this side, this side is blocked, but that's all you need for that one. And with all the jets clean, let's move on to the main carburetor. All right, so in most cases, in all cases, you're gonna to wanna to try to get this rubber seal out because the brake cleaner or the uh, carburetor dip will stretch these seals sometimes. I'm gonna leave mine in there because I'm just gonna be real careful with it. But if you're new to it, I would definitely recommend taking that seal out with a pick. Just be careful not to tear it. If it's old, it will deteriorate and break real easy. So you're just gonna wanna spray all in here and go ahead and give it a spray. That's the fuel inlet. And then you're gonna to want to come up here and there's gonna be a small hole. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. The hole that the jet went in, there's gonna be a small hole in there. Just wanna spray in there real good. And then your carburetor bowl, see this one's like new, but I guess that jet just had a little something in it. But um, that's all you really gotta do. And I'd recommend if you have an air compressor, blow out all these ports and blow out all the jets we just cleaned also. Um, and you're gonna have your so in here is gonna be your the needle you can see the needle right there just make sure all that looks clean and there's also passages here make sure those are all good 
like I said, go and verify this and blow it out with the air compressor. And once you do that, you are ready for reassembly. All right, so we're ready to reassemble. So first things first, get the motion tube and make sure the flat side is facing the uh, bottom of the carburetor so that that jet will hit up against it. And now you're gonna take your main jet, which is right here. And you can see that you can see through the hole and it is blown out good. Go ahead and drop that in there and grab your screwdriver. And go ahead and snug it up. It's not to be overly tight, just nice and snug. So if you ever have to come back in here again, it's not gonna be difficult to get that out. And then next you're gonna get your carburetor bowl. Make sure your needle is attached and not falling off there. And you're gonna stick the needle down inside of there. You see, just like that. And then you're gonna take your little metal pin and run that through there. Maybe. But sometimes you gotta fiddle around with them. These Hondas are pretty easy though because they're plastic. Um, but. Okay, so now you got that all nicely in there, you can get the carburetor bowl and you're going to want to face this drainage valve out like that because whenever the carburetor is sitting on the machine like that, you're going to want to be able to drain your carburetor in order to make sure that, uh, that, you can, that it's stored properly and you don't have another carburetor issue. So you're going to take your car bolt bolt and put it in there and make sure the rubber seat or the the seal is on there because if you don't then you're definitely going to have a leak no doubt about it let's see here sorry let's go ahead and get that started in there by hand and then you can kind of suck it up with the impact or with your wrench that's all it needs, a few little hits. And now we're gonna come around to the jet right here that we took out earlier. Make sure it's all nice and clean and you're gonna take it. Uh, orientation shouldn't matter on these, I believe, if I remember correctly. But most of the Honda, car Honda carbs are like this. So you see, I got it kind of just sitting in there and you're gonna push it down and you can see how it's flush now. And then you're going to go ahead and take your idle screw that you took out earlier. And you got to kind of get it started with the screwdriver here. Kind of get it stuck on your screwdriver. And go ahead and start it in there. We're going to run this thing all the way in. All the way in. And then we're going to count out four turns because that's what mine was which is what yours should be roughly three and oh yeah no, i miss i counted incorrectly let's restart here all right so we've got one two three and four okay I'll turn a little bit more okay so we got four turns out right there and that is pretty much it. Your carb is reassembled. Uh, let me go ahead and reposition this so you can see. All right, so we're down to final assembly. We're gonna go ahead and take, uh, this gasket happens to be blue, but it'll sit on there just like that. So you can see there, it sits on there just like that. And then you will go ahead and slide it onto the pegs. Or if you need to, go ahead and slide the gasket on first and then the carburetor, if that makes it easier for you. And the carburetor will slide right on after it. And then next, you'll have this gasket right here, this black one. And that one should go like, oh, sorry, like this, I believe. It's like that. And then uh, before you go, uh, go on with putting the air filter on, go ahead and check so these hoses come out of here and there's actually little slots. You'll see them down in the bottom of the base. They go right in those little slots. So just make sure those are inserted properly. 
and uh, go ahead and get your air filter housing and put the crankcase ventilation hose back on it so you don't get any dirt inside that. And be careful, there's these metal shims that go inside of this air housing. They will come out pretty often and uh, just make sure they didn't fall out. And you can go ahead and slide your air box back on and get the bolt started by hand. Get your bolt that goes down here. Sorry if my head wasn't in the camera there. But let's go ahead and get all of those started. And then uh, let me swap out to my 8mm here on the impact. Uh, let's see, where did I set it? This we will be back momentarily. All right, so we got the air filter crankcase tube on, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put your fuel line on because once the air box is on, you will not be able to get to the fuel connect. So let's go ahead and slide that on there. Might need some pliers, so it makes it easier. Uh, once you got that on there, go ahead and put the air box on. It'll slide right onto the pegs. Make sure that these little metal uh, inserts that go on the air box do not come off while you were uh, moving it around. And then you're going to go ahead and tight, hand tighten that nut just to get it started. And go ahead and hand tighten these just a little bit to get them started so they don't strip or get cross started on mean, sorry. regular wrench here just to make sure they're snug. They don't gotta be overly tight. I can't I don't think I think they're only supposed to be like nine foot pounds or so. And once you got that on go ahead and make sure you put both your air filters back in. Make sure your air filter is not deteriorated because if it is that'll clog your carburetor too. I've seen that happen. I've actually seen generator motors not run because they have a a ball of air filter particles stuck inside the intake valve. You know, to pull the head off of it, not a very fun task. Especially on these Hondas because they're covered in plastic. But um, then you're gonna, if you go ahead and check your oil, make sure all that's good, of course. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And if it ends up running good, I'd recommend changing your oil. You might as well just go ahead and get all your maintenance done out of, and out of the way. So go ahead and put that on and get snug it up. And using your hot and fire it up. So go ahead and turn your gas on and give it a second to flow. Make sure your choke is on. Choke is forward on these. And make sure you go through all this off. about comparing this companion series to my regular Honda in 2200. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put some fresh fuel on this thing uh, just to help settle it a little bit. It still has a little bit of a hesitation, but it's, uh, the gas is pretty old. I can smell it, so I'm just wanting that. But anyways, thanks for watching. Any questions, then let me know. Thank you. All right, uh, just to sum everything up, I uh, 
put some fresh gas in it and it's running good now. So fresh gas and the carburetor cleaner did fix my issue. And uh, before I end the video also I wanted to show, so this is what I dip carburetors in if they're really dirty um, and the carburetor cleaner won't get it out. Um, I'll dip it in that. And I also have a small wire, like a little small wire brush that goes on the end of the drill. And I'll uh, clean the carburetor bowl with that and get it all nice and clean. But uh, any questions, let me know. I'm going to have a comparison video between this is my, uh, this is my personal generator. I'll have a comparison video between this one and the companion series. So um, that'll be uploaded right after that. So if you want to check that one out, uh, I'd appreciate it. And uh, thank you. I like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. So.